so we're just gonna go over the main things that he stressed for us but again he could change it but it's been pretty consistent for the past few terms now from what we've been told so what is what is this whole muscle right here yeah so what are the different parts of the brachiocephalagus Okay, so what part is this? Yeah. And what is this entire part? Which is, it has two parts. What are they? Yeah. So they're not really divided very well on this specimen, but your occipitalis part is going to go to your occipital bone, which you guys know is at the back of the head. So that would be this part right here. And then your clytomastoideus is just this part down here but he doesn't really ask you to differentiate between those, or at least he didn't for us. You could just say cleidocephalicus, and he gave people the points for that. Uh, say this guy was, yeah. yeah. What's this guy? It's going sternomastoideus. Sternomastoideus. So, first of all, how do you guys know if this is a sheep or a goat? Yeah. yeah. So what was the name of that sinus? Uh, the yeah, good job. So just like literally just stick your finger in like right before the eye and if there's a depression there, it's a sheep because that's your infraorbital sinus. Goats don't have that. Because sometimes they'll ask you on like the midterm or the final like what species mm -hmm. this is and that's one way you can tell. What's another way to differentiate a goat from a sheep? Mm -hmm. um, and then do you guys know the muscle? that's only present in the goat, but not the sheep. <laughs> Sterno. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you guys seen a goat yet? Yeah. yeah. Okay, because I can pretty much 100% guarantee he will tag Sterno mandibularis. He loves it. So, basically it runs right here. If you see any muscle, basically in the cheek area of the goat, that's your Sterno mandibularis muscle. It's also known as the sternozygomaticus, if that helps you guys, because it comes from the zygomatic arch, which is on the side of the face. That's not really relevant, but that helped me remember it better. Uh, let's see. So do you guys know the boundaries of the jugular groove? No. Okay. <laughs> At some point in time, it would be good to know that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Say it louder. Sternomastoideus. Say it louder. Sternomastoideus. The uh, clido. Uh, no, clido. Phallus. Mm -hmm. And I think the omo. Hyoideus. Hyoideus. Yeah. Perfect job. Uh, so what is this? If he put like a string around this entire structure, what would you guys say? Yes. Uh, specifically, I think. What he wanted from us was common carotid artery and vagosympathetic trunk. Because he tied. He likes doing that a lot. He'll put like a string around two structures and then see who's paying attention. He will give half points if you put one, but he wants both. Okay. So what else is found in the carotid sheath? Yes. And that's important. You don't have to worry about it yet, but the horse doesn't have an internal jugular vein. So that's just another species difference that he likes testing. Um, what else? Can you think of anything else? Because I'm pretty sure... Yeah, I would say just no, those, you know, what's in the lecture material is more or less the structures that you need to know. There's all these other muscles that we learn in the dog. Um, maybe <laughs> review them one time, but I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time identifying them. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm pretty sure we got, we got tagged clytomastoideus, sternomandibularis and like one more and that was between the lab exam and the final exam so it was not a lot at all in this area yeah 